Hi, welcome to the Boca Voice and Fact or Fiction Friday. I'm here today with longtime Boca resident and philanthropist Dick Schmidt. Dick, thank you so much for joining it's us. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to sitting down and having a chat with you. Thanks, Dick. So, you know, you've been in Boca so long, you've seen so much change in Boca Raton. Do you mind sharing some of your, not only wisdom, but some of your visions and some of the things you've seen in Boca and some of the things you're excited about? Well, I've, uh, I like to think I've been a part of some of the change in Boca. I've been here uh, really since the early 60s when my parents, when I was a college student at the University of Florida, uh, I would, uh, they would permit me to use their, their residence for spring break, which was kind of convenient. So I've been here since the early 60s, uh, been a full-time resident since 68. I've been in Florida since 1959. So I've, I've been here to see the, the bulk of the changes that have gone on in the community. And, and I'm really excited about uh, the way Boca Raton is, is evolving today. Uh, I know it's somewhat controversial with the, with the traffic and the amount of construction and whatnot, but we really have Wilshire Boulevard going right through the middle of our community. And I'm just so excited to see that happen. It was always going to happen here, and, uh, and now it's finally here. And I think that uh, when everything finally gets settled and, and uh, the community absorbs what's happening, I think everybody's going to be so excited to have, have such an exciting uh, place in our community. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing it finished off. Well, that's great. And you have done so much for this community in between the hospital and FAU and you and your family. I just can't thank you enough for everything you've done for this community. It's just absolutely tremendous. Well, we recognize that the major assets in the community, particularly the institutions that comprise the community, which in our case uh, is the, the university and the hospital, the two major institutions, uh, are really set the standard and the tone for how the community is going to develop. And if we can get those two institutions to work in lockstep, we get the benefit. Working with the city, we, can, we get the benefit of uh, exponentially to the rest of the residents of the community. We all get the benefit from that. Now, you were a big part of getting golf um, of the Alliance to here, weren't you? Well, I wasn't really a part of getting it here, but I uh, like to think I was part of keeping it here. And as, uh, as you may know now, no longer the Alliance. Uh, I Alliance, heard that. Alliance is just, uh, as of last week, has dropped out as a title sponsor. But the PGA Tour has, has uh, it's, it's one of the more, it is uh, uh, probably the third biggest event on the Champions Tour. And uh, the, the, the PGA Tour is very excited about this event and the players are very excited. We just finished our, our best year ever. Allianz has dropped out as a title sponsor, so we're in the process of looking for a replacement title sponsor. Uh, the PGA Tour has agreed to assist us financially and otherwise. Uh, to make us make sure that we can see us through uh, another year whether we have a title sponsor or not. So we're assured of getting through the next year. We'll have plenty of time to find a title sponsor. So the tournament's going to be going to be here for the foreseeable future. I'm very excited about that. That's great. Well, you've been on to a new adventure in your life, and you've written a couple books. I happen to um, just finished reading Memory Road, yeah. which I got to tell you just brings me to, to homeland, and, and I, I love it. But tell us a little bit about what made you become an author. Well, I, you know, it's, uh, it's one of the few things I haven't done. Uh, you know, I think many people think that they, they have a book in them, and and, uh, and that they <clears throat> have always wanted to write a book, and I'm one of those people. Uh, I have a, a, a good friend, Doris Kearns Goodwin, that I'm sure many of your, sure. your viewership uh, would be familiar with her, uh, who wrote uh, Team Arrivals, uh, that was the Lincoln story that Steven Spielberg did the movie. Uh, Doris read a, a chapter outline I had done in the, in the first couple chapters of the book Boy and the Dolphin, my first book, and she called me up and, and said, you've got to write this book. This is a great story. You, you've got to write this story. And that gave me the encouragement I needed. I mean, someone of some credibility saying that, that maybe uh, <laughs> that I was capable of, of putting this book together. So I, I wrote that book. And, uh, and actually, about the time I finished the book, I was watching Homeland, uh, as you mentioned. And I was thinking to myself, this guy, Saul Berenson, what do they do with him when he retires? They, <laughs> Uh, did they kill him? I mean, they can't <laughs> let him run around loose. He knows too much. And I thought, well, it'd be really interesting. What if Saul Berenson retired and he got uh, a little, little bit of early onset Alzheimer's? Then he'd really represent a threat to the government. So I created such a character in Memory Road, and he, he, uh, uh, as you know, is uh, 
uh, they try to incarcerate him in an assisted living sure. facility and he makes his way out and is, uh, finds a car and is trying to find his way home to his daughter in Maryland where he feels wanted and loved and relevant. And the whole world's security agencies, the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, the, the KG, the SVU, the uh, Mossad, and the Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard, they're all looking for him. Uh, but nobody can find him because the only way he knows to get to Washington is on US-1. And they're all looking on the interstate <laughs> because it wouldn't occur to them that someone would drive up US-1 to go to Washington. So it makes for an interesting story. He has adventures along the way and there's, a, of course, as you know, a big chase scene <laughs> shoot him out at the end, at the end of the book. Uh, so uh, I, I'm actually very excited about that book. Uh, the first one is kind of a personal, uh, there's a lot of me in the story. I am not the character in the book, but there's a lot of my experience is in that book, but the second one is just a pure fun fiction writing. I really enjoyed putting now, it together. Now, the first one has almost required reading here locally in Boca. It's not, I mean, not the required reading, but a lot of the local schools utilize it. It's right here in um, Gumbo Limbo. They use it um, as well here. I mean, it, a lot of required reading is, is in locally in Boca Raton. A lot of the students read it. It's, it's well known. It's a well known book here in Boca Raton. Well, actually, I wasn't aware of that, so I'm pleased to hear <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, I, I've just uh, uh, I've just come from a, uh, a, a convention in Fort Lauderdale, a spearfishing convention uh, for people who are interested in free diving and yeah. spearfishing. In Fort Lauderdale, and uh, and because of that book, because it involves diving in the Bahamas, uh, I went down there and met uh, met Sherry Day, who was a resident here in Boca Raton, who puts that uh, convention on. She's the the, the world record holder uh, for uh, spearfishing. Uh, I don't know how they measure that. I guess <laughs> in pounds of fish that you catch yeah. or whatnot. And uh, uh, I met so many interesting people, and so the book really caught on down there. I was very pleased to go down and do that. So it's nice to know that it's uh, it's finding its way through it uh, is. the local history I know, because so, I was asking my daughter this morning about some of the books, and my daughter's seen the book, my daughter's read it. So there are it is getting out there, especially within our youth, so it's nice to know that it's, it's getting into um, a lot more of the traditional mainstreams. Well, it's a great story for kids, because the story is about a young man, 13 years old, who is... Uh, who is uh, raised by his grandparents on an out island in the Bahamas. And uh, <clears throat> he's really left to him, himself to make his own decisions and be responsible for his own actions. So it's a, there are great lessons for kids to learn in that story. And, uh, and in time he grows up and goes off to the University of Florida and, uh, and ultimately uh, uh, flies from the United States Navy in Vietnam. and. Uh, uh, and it has, of course, or during all this time, this relationship with a dolphin who was his, his best friend as a child growing up. And mm -hmm. The whole story leads to the, the denouement where he's reunited, or, or is he going to be reunited with a dolphin, and what will happen when he is. So um, it's a great story for kids, but it's really a story for guys my age, I'm 73, because it's, it's set in the 50s, so there are references to things today the kids wouldn't know anything about, such as church keys. Uh, the, the kids wouldn't know anything about opening a beer can with a church key. We called him a John Wayne in the Marine Corps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so. Uh, and my kids didn't know who John Wayne was. And I, well, <laughs> and I, it, it's amazing. It's it's amazing. So, uh, so there's all kinds of references in there for for people my age, and uh, so I think it's a book for everybody. But it is it's a great story of a of a kid who uh, who who just makes good decisions all his life, and, and uh, it's a great story for kids. So what's next? Is there going to be another third book? Yeah, I'm working on the third one now. It's a, it's a business uh, murder thriller uh, adventure. Nobody, hopefully, in Boca Raton, I hope. Uh, no, but it takes place uh, near here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Well, Dick, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And again, I can't thank you enough for all that you do for our community. Well, I thank you. It's a pleasure. You know, I, we say in our family, if it's important to this community, it's important to me and my family. So well, thank you so much. Thank it's you. a pleasure. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us on The Book of Voice. We look forward to seeing you next week on Factor Fiction Friday. And don't forget to check us out online or on Facebook. Look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.